serratus anterior plane block hopefully you had the chance to watch the remaining videos that covered the rest of the trunker region and analgesia and interfacial plane block and the first lecture was mainly to build your um, fundamentals of uh, trunk analgesia. <clears throat> so let's get started. Um, this is an important picture for the spinal nerve anatomy between T2 to T12, which will show up again and again and again every time we're talking about thoracic wall uh, block. So the spinal nerve, which is the, the small uh, segment here, uh, built by the dorsal and ventral rami, then it branch um, <coughs> into two major branches, the, the ventral branch and the dorsal uh, branch. The ventral rami um, continue as the intercostal nerve and the dorsal give the medial and lateral branches. Um, for the serratus anterior block, we are, um, the main target is the branches of the intercostal nerve. So the intercostal nerve give two main branches, the lateral cutaneous branch almost at the mid axillary level and the anterior cutaneous branch. So as you see here, the lateral cutaneous branch farther divided into anterior and posterior branches. And usually uh, these branches, um, it peers through the serratus anterior and then branches superficial to the serratus. So this is a very important uh, concept we will build on now when we talk about the superficial and deep serratus anterior. So whether you do the block above and below, that's important to which uh, nerve you're going to cover. Now, just to refresh your mind, hopefully you, you watch this in the first lecture. Um, the serratus anterior, as you see this nice beautiful muscle here, originate from the top first eight to nine uh, um, ribs. So the upper eight ribs, and then it wraps around posterior medially and goes underneath the scapula and attached to the medial border of the scapula. The, the serratus anterior muscle is innervated by the long thoracic nerve, which originates from C5 to C7. And the function of this muscle is to do protraction and upward rotation of the uh, scapulothoracic joint. The, so, Above this muscle, so as you see here, um, uh, underneath it, the intercostal uh, muscle, but above this muscle, especially from the back and lateral, the latissimus dorsi muscle. So the latissimus dorsi wrap around uh, from the back and to the front and overlap, come over the serratus anterior. The latissimus dorsi originate from the spinous processes of the inferior six thoracic vertebrae, and as well as the thoracocolumnar fascia, iliac crest, and inferior three or four uh, ribs. So it's a large, thin muscle that wraps around the torso and goes to the front, and then eventually it will attach in the intertubercular sulcus or the body uh, septal groove of the humerus of the humerus uh, bone here 
This muscle is innervated by the thoracodorsal nerve. Thoracodorsal nerve, which also um, originate from C6, C7, C8. So, serratus anterior innervated by long thoracic nerve. Latissimus dorsi innervated by thoracodorsal nerve. And the function of the latissimus dorsi is to extend, adduct, and medially rotate the shoulder. It also elevates body toward arm during climb, uh, uh, climbing. Why this is important? Because when you do this block and you block these nerves, you will expect some motor deficit. And it will be important if you are assisting the patient to know about this. Now, um, how we do this, so the serratus anterior, as I said, is a muscle originate from the anterior aspect of the first or the upper, uh, I would say eight reps, seven to nine. And um, so the way you do this, you position the patient either supine or lateral, but lateral um, will be easier. Uh, and I will show you why in a second. And interestingly, this is um, a good block for, for patient who cannot lay supine. So if they are in their side, easier for them in their side, that's a perfect block for them. So use the linear ultrasound. And as I said, we have two serratus plane block. We have superficial and we have deep. So the superficial, usually at the uh, fifth rib, um, at the level of the nipple, so you can watch that and you go lateral, um, but anywhere along the extension of the serratus anterior and mid-axillary line, so this is why it's easier to do it in the lateral position, so mid-axillary line with the arm abducted, because you, you have to put the, you have to put uh, your your transducer there, and then the target will be between the latissimus dorsi and the serratus anterior muscle. Uh, watch out for the thoracodorsal artery. The deep serratus anterior, uh, the deep serratus plane block, or the other name is the subserratus plane block, um, identify the tissue plane between the serratus anterior and the external. Uh, intera, intercostal muscle, usually at um, T6 to uh, T9, uh, so um, around the xiphoid level there. And the needle is directed caudally and laterally uh, beyond the inferior edge of the scapula. And then you can put uh, anywhere between 20 and 40 mil or even you can put a catheter in that uh, plane. So, some, um, some uh, uh, providers, they uh, used to, or sometimes they combine this uh, serratus plane block with the um, rhomboid intercostal plane block, and this is known as the RIS block, which stands for rhomboid intercostal plane block, and subserratus plane block, which I will cover in the uh, rhomboid uh, plane block uh, video. So the expected nerve that uh, can be or should be blocked with, with, with the serratus anterior plane block is uh, the lateral cutaneous uh, branches uh, from uh, T2 to T7, really depend on how much uh, local anesthetic you are using and how much it uh, is spread. Then if you are doing the deep one, then you can uh, get the long thoracic and the thoracodorsal nerve. Remember the long thoracic uh, supply the serratus anterior and the thoracodorsal nerve supply the latissimus dorsi. But you will um, never, I would say, get the anterior cutaneous branches of or the pectoral uh, branches with this block. So it's an important thing to keep in mind. Indication, potential uses breast surgery, thoracotomy, rib fracture, 
Um, in theory, this block is not enough as it does not cover the main intercostal branch nerve. However, it has been proposed that fracture rip create pathway for the local anesthetic to reach uh, deeper. So it break that facial line that I showed you earlier. Uh, what I found it very helpful and useful for uh, chest tube side uh, pain. Uh, and it's optimal because you can literally put the patient on the lateral decubitus and do the block. Um, contraindication, general contraindication, patient refuser, allergy to local anesthetic, infection, bleeding, and complication, also general last. Um, anything in the uh, chest wall tend to have a high absorption, uh, pneumothorax, infection, and bleeding. So more practical images here um, you can put the ultrasound around here or around here and you see the latissimus dorsi how it's overlapping the serratus anterior and then uh, this is uh, your uh, target i'll show you more uh, ultrasound picture here so this is the superficial serratus so here we have the latissimus uh, dorsi and here we have the serratus anterior muscle so uh, in the in the uh, plane between them when you inject that's the superficial plane block and then for the deep serratus um, so you have to go below the serratus anterior and above the intercostal muscle as you see and inject in this level and you see the local anesthetic. Um, this is a nice uh, video. So basically this is for the deep serratus uh, block and as you see here very nicely you are uh, hydro dissecting the layer between the serratus anterior and the um, intercostal uh, muscles and this is the local anesthetic opening up the plane. Thank you for watching.